I got a question. So do you feel like all these other these when you re access these portals do you feel like these are all different realities that you're accessing and do you feel like these are like different projections of what we would call the matrix like do you know what i'm trying to well, say like yeah i know what you're, i know what you're saying let me begin with this just to kind of put everybody in the same perspective we have three bodies that we live in simultaneously we have a physical body here on earth we have an astral body which is called the spirit body and that resides in the astral. And then we have a soul. And that resides on the mental plane. Each one of our bodies is in that state or in that vibrational um, location constantly. So our spirit is always in the astral. It's connected to us, but it's always there because it lives in that vibrational state. So what happens is if when you decide and you are finally successful in going to the astral, what you're going to be successful in doing is moving your conscious mind to the astral body. Now, when you're dreaming and your astral body is moving around the astral, your subconscious is connected to it, which you don't get a lot of information from that. It doesn't think the same way as your conscious mind. So all you're basically trying to do is move your conscious mind to that astral body. So what I'm doing is when I'm making a connection and and I want to say this too, I was never the one who initiated these portal connections for me. There was a third party doing it and there still is a third party involved. It's been over 30 years and I have absolutely no idea who it is. They don't communicate directly with me. They don't give me information. They give me the experiences. They allow me the experiences and I have to learn and judge for myself. Now, when I'm on these, when I'm in these experiences, my job is to take in the information and then document it. I don't, I, I make no judgment calls. Everything is put down exactly as I experience it. That's what I do. I've been documenting for years. I learn from the experiences and then I learn how things work. I'm a technician and my, uh, my goal is to understand how these work understand how to manipulate them and understand um, where I'm going or the others that I'm, I'm meeting with. So as we go along, I'm experiencing landscapes, I'm experiencing other dimensions or other worlds and other beings. And also it took me a time to realize this because I, I document everything. I go back and I look at everything. I just I discovered that what I began doing is being connected with people. Now, people here on Earth, it was probably in this dimension. And what I'm doing is I'm seeing through their eyes. It took me a while to figure out why I was seeing at these low levels. So actually, I'm connecting with people and seeing through their physical eyes. I don't feel I don't know who it is, but I can see what's happening and what they're looking at. And the reason why. And another reason why that I know that these are portals is um, I found a way to do connections during the day rather than through lucid dreaming. And what I did was once I discovered that it's through daydreaming. If you kind of think about it, you have your dreams and then you have your daydreams. They're very well connected with our, our, uh, our brain waves. So when you compare one to the other, very similar. I realized and discovered about 15 years ago that these lucid dreams that I'm having can be duplicated or not the dreams, but the portal connections can be duplicated in what I call them glimpses. And I named them glimpses because that's how you perceive them. Now, everybody daydreams. That means everybody has a chance to make these connections through what I call glimpses. And the only reason that I discovered it is because I had a very long commute every day to work. It's an hour to work minimum, hour home minimum every day. So you figure five days a week, I'm daydreaming. I'm just sitting in traffic. So I discovered that when we go off into a daydream, your subconscious mind is connecting with other places, other dimensions, other realities. We're picking up information and, and, and we're coming back thinking that we're just daydreaming about being a rock star or whatever you're doing. No, there's something else happening.
and it took me almost a year to figure out how to get in, how to go there and bring my consciousness there and then bring it back. I found out how to bring my consciousness there, but there's a thick veil between here and there. And when you pass back to from between, you know, as you, as you pass back through the veil, it's like taking a hard drive through, uh, through a magnetic field. It wipes everything clean. So once I figured out how to bring that information back, I started realizing I was meeting with other beings there and that sort of thing. And that brings me into another uh, realm of it, issues that we run into here on Earth and, and we run into on the astral. And this is after many decades of personal experiences that I make these determinations because everything that I hear and that I receive, I look at. And then I just think about it and I compare it to whatever else that I've experienced. And the information I would bring back is whether you're on the astral or whether you're in other dimensions, every being everywhere has their own agenda. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. What is happening is if you go on the astral, you finally are successful. And you're going to start to probably meet beings. It's no different from going to a very popular um, tourist attraction. And you got all these tourists, um, all the, they're wanting to give you a free tour or uh, pay you to go on their tour. And they're going to tell you how great everything is. Well, what happens is they're going to tell you what you want to hear. Same thing with spirit guides, angels, whatever you want to call them. Whether it's an angel or whether it's a demon. It just depends on what you want to see. They're going to show you what you want to see, and they're going to tell you what you want to hear. Because we've all heard of the Akashic Records and that sort of thing. Who do you think accesses that on a regular basis? They all do. And when you show up, they know you better than you would ever know them. And since you're on their playing field, they're going to tell you what you want to hear. Because they want you to follow them and they want you to follow their agenda. And that most of the time, if you're in the astral, that agenda is the same agenda that's here on Earth. They're going to keep you in the same band of disinformation that we get here. And what I have to say about most of the people who utilize spirit guides and believe them as if they would but they wouldn't believe anybody off the street that they didn't know, but they would believe them. If these spirit guides and these angels or whatever were so good, where is the proof that they've ever done anything for mankind in a positive nature other than feed us a bunch of bullshit that tells us we're going to the fourth dimension. We're going to the, the fourth dimension is the astral. And if you want to know what the astral is really like, it's just as bad as it is here on Earth. You just don't know it well enough. And if you follow these guides and all the beings on the astral, they're going to keep you in the same recycled manipulation that has been going on for eons. They're not going to give you any real information. And what I found out in misinformation is there's a little bit of truth, just enough to make you believe it, and the rest is all lies. But if you hold it up as, as if you look at it as a skeptic or begin to question the reality of that truth, then you will quickly see through the veil of, of lies. So as I go through this, these experiences, I pull in all this information and I begin to see a pattern. And once I don't buy into what's being presented to me, then I'm not as popular. And let me give you an example of what I what was what they were trying to convince me of doing. I told you I was able to access these portals during the daytime. And what they told me is, and this has been several times by several beings, we've got an idea. Let us show you how to keep those portals open. That's the first red flag. Why would somebody want to keep those portals open? There's a good reason for that. Because if they're trying to manipulate me, and if they could keep those portals open, then they have a free, they have free, uh, 
rain to our to our locations. And what I also found out is what I see when I'm looking through a portal, others on the other side can see me as well. So we both get to clearly see each other as if we were on a video phone. So there's no hiding yourself. There are higher beings that you can probably trust, but I question everything. And that's what we all need to do. We need to question everything. If you are passing on information that somebody gave you that you don't really know who they are, you wouldn't do that from somebody on the street. Why would you do that from somebody in the astral and the spirit world? I think you're muted. I didn't want to. I didn't want to. Um, I didn't want to um, make noise and interrupt you. But like, what I was saying was, do you think that these beings can't create portals, or do you think they need us to create them? Um, do you, so? Do you think? In, in a way, I'm saying, do you think we're a lot more powerful than we've been led to believe? And then also, do you also feel like that they've create, or do you think that they've created these realities that they that they've like that they they've created this reality and then the astral reality? Because let me tell you something, and, and just keep those two questions on the on the back burner for a second. Because like I've said this many times on my podcast, when I'm in dream cycles, like I'll live like for weeks on to end, like on, on another reality, you know. And then I'll wake up, and it's only been eight hours, but it's like I've just spent like two weeks in this other reality where I have a whole other life in the in the, in like the dream world or if the astral. But then in this world, you know, there's like a barrier, so. A lot to unpack there, but like, what do you think? Well, first we have to realize that we're spiritual beings in a human form right now. So we are aliens. I mean, we say, oh, do aliens exist? Well, of course they do. What do you think we are? We're just here in our basic human prison is what I call it, because that's pretty much what it is. You know, we're here and... I would I would say this is the prison, Earth. You go on the astral, that's the prison yard. There's still a fence there. And all the beings that are on the astral, they work for the warden. So there's no difference between here and there other than it's a little bit more free. So if you look at it that way, then you kind of understand. But there is an agenda no matter what. And yes, there is someone controlling it. I don't know who that is. I have an idea who it is, but obviously they're masters of manipulation. Now, I mean, when I'm talking about manipulation, it's very, very hot. I call it psychological, but it's also physiological. It's on several different levels. I mean, it takes a regular mastermind to program people from the time they're born until the time they end up dying and all the way through. So if you finally escape the world, like you got an astral projection, you get there and you're like, oh, I'm finally free. You know, I get to be around with the spirits and stuff. You, you've, only, you've only left the main building. Now you're in the yard. You have not left the prison. It's still being monitored and you're still being controlled and manipulated. And that's why when you go, go to places, whether it's a different dimension or whatever, you have to basically go there you have to experience it, and then you have to decide at some point after you've had enough experiences whether this is something that you would you would like to experience again. When it comes to portals, now I believe in the fact that the portals are being utilized in all different types of dimensions by everybody, just like a cell phone. But there's different types of portals. There's a there are portals for communication. So if it's just me and you. We can see each other and we can communicate. We can't travel through it. Then there are portals that can be con that can be introduced and connected through a third party. So the third party connects me to another location and they're able to monitor it. Now, I believe there's a monitoring system on a lot of these portals so that they don't keep them open because in order to keep a portal open, and I've discovered this, you ha it takes a, a large amount of energy to do that. For you to, for you to cause an opening in space time and maintain it takes a large amount of energy. That's how I know I didn't, I didn't um, start at the beginning. So I had, there had to be a third party doing it. Hold on. 
So there was a third party initiating it and they did it for many years. And then I started opening them myself. And then I noticed they were very short and very pixelated until I was able to build up enough energy in order to keep them open longer and to have a better connection. And still, even though I've been doing this for all these years, they still initiate them. And I know when they're initiated by them because it's completely clear, like a 4K and it's and it's a little bit longer and that. But also going back to the portals, then there are portals for traveling and portals can be used for a lot of things, but we're very limited and restricted on how we utilize them. So far, I haven't been restricted to it, but that doesn't mean it's not being monitored. I believe there's there are more than third parties sitting and watching to control that. And that's why I think a lot of these beings wanted me to leave it open because they might not have access to our area. I believe that where we are located at is there's a there's a very thick, highly insulated veil that we are subjected to and around us that keeps us keeps others from invading our territory and it keeps us from coming out of that territory. And that's another thing about us. We're being we're being highly insulated from our source, which means we are spiritual beings in a human body. But we have the potential of creating galaxies, black holes, quasars, portals. We don't have the energy source that we normally do. And we're not a, a type of being that causes destruction but we have those abilities. And the reason why we are so highly insulated in our world right now, they removed all of our memories to come down here. They, they insulate us and, and uh, block us from our source. The reason being is no one can throw a blanket on the sun and control it. We are like small suns. The only way that they can, they can, somehow bind it. They have to bind us in order to control us and get us manipulated. And that's what we're doing. We're being bound. But we have the potential of things that we can't even imagine. And I didn't used to believe that. But ever since things have happened to me personally, and I can be able, to, I can see what people have the potential of. And the fact that don't underestimate yourself don't feel don't give in to fear because what you have is something that the controllers fear because they understand our potential and they know that by manipulation the only way that they can keep the veil on us is through their manipulated practices that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. So, um, people in the audience were asking, like, are you, do you do you have an idea? Like, who? You, she, my friend Boobster wants to know. She said, "Who do you think is? Who, you said you have an idea of who you think is running this reality? Like, what 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 are your thoughts? Do you think it's like what the Gnostics would call the Archons or something like that, or do you think it's like how people talk about the Anunnaki or something like that, or what do you what do you think about well, that?" It's obviously some someone, a being that has a level of technology that is far above ours. But what, what's happening is, <coughs> I have questions sometimes, but I won't get a direct answer. But sometimes what will happen is, like I'll be in a portal and something I asked, I was thinking of a couple of days ago would just pop in there and it would answer my question. It was just, a, it was just showing me something. That's all it was. And I'm like, oh, wow. Well, can't get more direct than that. And a couple times I was able to see some of the beings that were, that were, um, I would say, kind of trying to um, create an issue with me in my dreams. Cause I do lose, cause I also, I could become aware that I'm in a dream. Once these things start to happen, I realize what's going on. And they were real dark beings and their darkness in the dream would absorb light. So the closer you got to them, the you couldn't see anything. And I knew there was something behind it. And so a couple of times after those dreams, I would I would be in front of a portal and I and basically there was it was a weird looking room made out of rock and some other things. And the three dimensional uh the three dimensional bodies of those that were behind the darkness 
were shown to me. It almost like there was a screen in the middle of a room and you couldn't see the screen. All you could see was the image and it was three dimensional. It was rotating in a circle, showing me what this, this being looked like. And that's why I say that when you're in these different realms, they can make you see what they want you to see. They can change their image. They can make it whatever they want. And I do believe a lot of them do and have some inhabitants on earth. But since our visual spectrum is less than 1% of the total visual spectrum, they could be standing right next to you and you would never have any idea that was going to happen, that, that they were there. So we have a very limited visual on when we're utilizing our third eye, it's a lot better. And I think we have more of a spectrum, but they still have the ability to manipulate their images and, and several other things. So that's why you can never really trust anything because you really don't know what you're talking to. And they really might not have any image at all. Some of the, some of the, um, the creatures on the astral realm are autonomous. That means they're, they're some kind of a etherical uh, image created by a database somewhere. I mean, obviously you have the Akashic records. You've got a database that records everything visual, mental, and, um, and sound. You've got autonomous beings there too. So whatever they're, they're gathering that information from the database when you cross the realm so they can be damage control. That's what they're doing there. So it's an automated system. You're not going to see robots, but you're going to see those because robots are made out of a physical form. Those are ether, ether based. The whole astral is ether based. And when we create here or there, we utilize the ether and that's how we create solids. So when we're in our true form and we have our true abilities, that's what we use to create. It has been used for a long time. Things like that have been hidden from us because obviously if we knew all this, then we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be stuck here. Do you believe we're in a, do you believe this is a prison planet? The more that you research and the more these experiences you have and the more that you look at the world and our current circumstances. I oh, know. Um, try not to, I, I should have told you this before the show, you know, that thing that they wanted us to get a couple years ago. If we get yeah. into like politics and stuff, try not to mention that. Like, because they, oh, they I don't really go down I, for that. I, yeah. They, I'm they, not. Yeah. So they, they, you know, what they're doing is it's, it's done really intelligently. Um, they give you the option. You make your choice. But what they do is they drive you into a corner and then you can make your choice. What, what finding yourself and finding your own answers will do for you. And this is what I promote. I promote don't believe anybody. You don't have to believe me. I'm saying is experience things for yourself. That's how you will find the truth. Don't look... If you look inside, don't look inside and ask somebody else. Find it for yourself. I knew a long time ago that this, what happens here on earth, didn't seem right. But until I began to experience it and farther into it, then I knew exactly I was right and I had some backup for it. For me, experience is everything. And the only way you're going to find yourself is through experiences, reading a book and and just repeating what you read. Like I grew up in the metaphysical, you know, 80s and 90s when it was really big. And the whole thing was this. Oh, we're all one consciousness. We're all this and we're all that. And we're peaceful and we're all this. That's fine. You know, that's great. But everybody was spouting the same crap all the time. And I have spirit guides and I was, uh, you know, I was Jesus and I, you know, I, I channeled uh, Einstein and all this kind of stuff. And I would ask him a real basic question. I'm like, great. Then you should be able to answer this basic question. Why don't we have free energy? Why don't we have this? What? Well, they, you have to question it because if we did have all these people channeling all these really, you know, industrious and great people, we wouldn't be in this situation right here. The spirit guides were out. Let me give you another example. In only six countries in this world, almost a million children are missing every single year. 
where in the hell are these spirit guides and angels and everything saving the most the most genuine, the most helpless people of our species? Why you got a missing? really good point about that. I, I've, I've often wondered about that. And then, you know, like if you talk to someone who's like into these like galactic like um, circles or whatever, you know, they'll say, oh, well, there's a there's a non-interference clause or something. Or they'll say they, these beings can not interfere because we have free will. And I'm like, no, that's bullshit. Because if demons can interfere in our reality, which I think they can, then I think that angels should be able to interfere. But then I'm starting to wonder, are there even angels or are all these entities against us you know what well, i mean it's there, i'm starting are, to think that all these entities are against us and i'd also like to talk to you about like i'm gonna have jerry marzinski on in may he's scheduled um he talks about like the mind infiltration of these entities how they get in our mind and they put negative thoughts in our mind like if i don't listen to affirmations at night like i i get negative thoughts while i'm dreaming you know it's almost like they're pumping negative thoughts in my head while i'm sleeping and i can't i have no control over it so there's a lot more going on, I think, than I guess that's what I was trying to get to is I feel like there's a lot more going on with these entities than the root, the average person even even never even thinks about or realizes, you know, I think that I mean, what do you what do you think about what I just said? Well, I'll tell you from personal experience, when I was very young, I was having the out of body experiences, but I also was having like these these dream terrors when I was a kid. And I mean, they stuck out so much that I, I remember them to this day. I would always get like kidnapped in my room by this unseen force. My legs and my arms would, would go numb, like when your arms and legs fall asleep. And then my vision would get blurred. They would drag me through my parents' room, which was right next to mine, you know, and then drag me out of there. And I was totally freaking out because I couldn't move. I couldn't scream. I couldn't really see. And you know, I used to have that stuff all the time. And I'm like, wow, this is. You know, when I got older, I go, that's not, that's, you know, that happened too much. There was a lot of things going on. So I'm like, okay. So as I got older and then those dreams kind of tried to start again with these black, I call them the dark one figures. And they started coming in and every time they would come in, I would get pulled out of the dream and into a portal. It was like almost a protection thing. Then finally I got to the point where I was getting so desensitized by this that I was no longer fearful. I my you know, my hair on the back of my neck, no mat, no longer stood up. I kind of like thought this is bullshit. So finally I got to the point where I would just face them straight off, you know, and I stood straight up to them and I wasn't going to back down for a minute. And once you, you show no fear, then they're not able to feed off of you. And that's the whole thing. The low vibrational, uh, things that you admit like fear and depression and all that sort of thing, they feed off of that. And that's why we're here, because that's why there's bad news. That's why there's wars. That's why there's people suffering all the time, because they're perpetuating the suffering. That's a cycle. And what they're trying to do is to keep you in that cycle. They keep, want to keep you into the worried, depressed, and fearing, and everything else. Once you don't give them what they want, then they don't have a need for you. But also, they begin to realize that you are now changing your programmed pattern into something more individual. And they don't want that. They want collective. They don't want individuals. So when you start to break yourself out of what I call the game, and life is a game, it's a psychological or physiological game. Once you turn off a lot of this media and turn off a lot of this stuff, and you begin to look inside, then you become a threat. Now, I'm not saying that they're going to threaten you, but what I'm saying, you become a threat to them because they now fear you because you are not in their system. And you might get nightmares and stuff like that, but if you if you turn around and decide you're not going to put up with that crap, then their manipulation doesn't work. And once it doesn't work and you realize what's happening, you become to change quite a bit. And that's what you need. That's what everybody needs to do. They need to buy out of the game, walk out. 
Yeah. Well, I got a couple comments from the audience. I think we can we can react to these. King James says most have been indoctrinated to submit sovereignty to tyranny. That sounds about right. That sounds exactly yeah. right. And then candidly, she she she, uh, she followed up with this. And I want to get into this with you while we have time. She says that's why after death, unless we're awake, they'll mind wipe us again and send us back here. Like I keep saying, like if I have a choice when I when I die. Because I I'm feel like I'm pretty sure there's an afterlife. Like I know mean, I'm skeptical, but I mean I feel like it's the I you know. But I feel like this is a recycling thing that's going on over and over again. Like oh, yeah. I'm trying to figure out like how I don't have to come back here again because I don't want to do. I don't want to go end up going to the light because I get tricked by someone that I think's my grandmother. So then I decide to go to the light, and then I wake up in a birth canal, and I'm like, oh fuck, not this again. You know. Right. And then I have to live a whole other life here. You know what I mean? It's like, it's really messed up. Like, and I feel like that's happened to me before. And, and you well, know, it, there's been people, it's all started with uh, John Lear and Whitley Strieber. They used to come on the Art Bell show back in the day. They started saying that the light was a trick that, you know, and then it's kind of carried on all throughout these years where people think that now that the light, excuse me, is, is a trick. Like, do you, what do you think about all that stuff? Yeah, it's a recycling process. We're not here to learn. We're here to produce we're here to produce negative energy for these entities and you know i mean even robert moreau years ago touched on it i heard it and i was like nah you know i don't i didn't really believe that you know and for a long time, i didn't believe it until i started seeing what was happening and experiencing it for myself and i'm like well there's no really other reasoning behind it i mean we're you know we're being farmed that's just exactly what it is i mean you know we if we're being under if we're being held under such stringent circumstances, then we must be creating power at a high level that we just don't understand. And if we're creating that much energy, then, oh yeah, then we're going to be the most popular uh, beings around. So they will definitely want to keep us on the, you know, in the pens for sure. You know, it's, it's in their best interest to keep us, you know, as low as they can get us. So, yeah. you know, and we're finally coming to the point where we're starting to, you know, wake up and, and see what's happening. And it, it, you don't have to have any special religion or belief or anything, but people can see on an average basis what's going on, you know, and, and you don't have you don't have to be intelligent to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. It's like you just have to be awake, you know, to awake to your surroundings, I think. Yeah, I don't go with awake. It's too much like woke. I just go with you're, you're going to be the type of person that questions everything and you need to look within. Yeah. And it seems kind of stupid because everybody thinks, oh, we'll just go get our gun and that's going to be it. If wars were the, if wars were the, um, you know, if that was the, that was going to help us, would they help us a long time ago? You know, conflict is what they want. We don't want conflict, but we certainly can take care of ourselves. When we get to a certain degree and a spiritual connection, you have no problem taking care of yourself. And when you when you when you lose fear by understanding your potential, then it opens up a whole new door. And that's what you need to do. You need to understand your own potential. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. You can't unsee it and you can't unexperience it. Do you think you know, all of us that are that are that know about this will will know when we leave here like what to do? You think it'll come to us intuitively? It, it's very difficult. It's very difficult when you understand the veil because you can go to sleep and get in a dream and do some stupid stuff that you would never do consciously. And you think to yourself, why would I do that? That was just really terrible. It's because the level of manipulation and the veil are so thick. There's an insulated layer, more actually multiple insulated corrosive layers. And so what we have to do is if you can get yourself practiced in the form of moving your consciousness to your astral or or expanding it i tell everybody visualize and daydream on a regular basis because those are your tools those are your tools for communication those are your tools for opening yourself up to other avenues now i'm not talking about opening yourself up to, to other spirits or anything of that nature but what you're doing is you're exercising your your uh, spiritual muscle is what I call it. And what you're doing is you're allowing your mind to not be focused on technology and that sort of thing. 
And that was the other thing with since we're spiritual beings, we don't need technology and get, getting us to become um, uh, dependent on technology. Then we're dependent. We're dependent on food, we're dependent on clothes, we're dependent on heating and cooling. We're dependent on shelter. We're dependent on a lot of things. And so people get manipulated when they're because of their dependencies and we depend on emotional uh, support and so, sort of thing. So there's a lot of things that keep us here. But if you're going to when you when you pass on, you know, if you are better at bringing your consciousness along, then you will be there. You will be all there and you can make a decision based upon what you want versus what you're told to do. And if you don't believe and buy into the crap here and on the astral, then once you pass on, chances are you're going to have a say so in what you're going to do. And if you get to this a, a better level, you can make a choice. We might have the ability to make a choice, but if we haven't been consciousness enough at that moment to make that choice, we that we might end up here again. 